Before the game with Oakland, Miami quarterback Bob Greasy thought he could run circles around the Oakland defense. But Oakland had something more direct in mind and took a 2017 lead in the fourth quarter. Greasy then scrapped his roundabout game plan and ran the Dolphins straight into field goal range. Oakland had beaten the Dolphins two weeks ago in a field goal with 11 seconds remaining. Now it was the Dolphins' turn for last-minute heroics as Carl Crimser was true from 39 yards away and kept Miami out of the lost column for the first time this year. And then there was the forgotten team of the West, Kansas City. Forgotten because of an injury to this man, all-time league-leading passer, Lynn Dawson. When the Chiefs also lost their second quarterback, Jackie Lee, all Super Bowl chances were supposedly gone. Against the Chiefs in Denver's Mile High Mud Bowl last week, healthy quarterback Pete Lesk threw, and number 88, Al Denson, had caught a touchdown pass in all four games this year. But for most of the afternoon, the Chiefs' powerful defense kept the Bronco offense groveling in the mud. One of Pete Lisk's passes straight into the hands of number 46, Chief tight safety Jim Kearney, who skimmed over 60 yards of muck to a Kansas City touchdown. Meanwhile, surprise, the Chiefs have a quarterback too. Number 10 is a six foot three, 212 pounder who broke most of Don Meredith's passing records at SMU. In this his first pro start, he hit on 14 passes for more than 200 yards. His name is Mike Livingston. His passes to number 84, Fred Arbanis, and number 89, Otis Taylor, set up the Chiefs' first score. A great aid to any passing quarterback is the draw play, as executed by number 45, Robert Holmes. In the first half, Jan Stenerud kicked three of his four field goals, including this one from 54 yards. In the second half, as the cool shadows lengthened, Mike Livingston and the Chiefs iced the game. Livingston passed to Wendell Hayes for 17 yards. He then passed for 18 yards to Otis Taylor, who battled onward as only Otis Taylor can. For the crushing touchdown, Livingston handed off to another new chief star from Texas, running back Warren McVeigh, recently obtained from Cincinnati. As we review that last play, the effectiveness of the Chiefs' upfront blocking becomes apparent, as number six McVeigh skitters by with a new way to a Kansas City victory. Mike Livingston and Warren McVeigh will be heard from again, and so will the rest of the somewhat prematurely forgotten team of the West, the Kansas City Chiefs. Houston has our number. They seem to know what we're going to do before we do it. So said number 32, O.J. Simpson, after his first appearance in the Astrodome. A ferocious oiler defense allowed Buffalo only 44 yards rushing all afternoon as Houston won their third straight to remain atop the AFL's Eastern Division. While the most celebrated rookie was being stopped cold, number 23, Jerry Levias, gave Buffalo a fleeting glimpse at what was to follow.
47,000 fans rejoiced in the sinew and swiftness of a balanced Houston attack as number 11, Pete Beathard, directed the Oilers to an early lead. Buffalo quarterback Jack Kemp continued to show recovery from last year's crippling knee injury as he fired strikes to number 25, Haven Moses, and number 86, Marlon Briscoe. Number 42, Butch Bird, tried to keep Buffalo in contention as he swiped three Houston passes. Unfortunately for Bird, his efforts were canceled as the Oilers picked off four passes. This one for a touchdown by number 29, Ken Houston. Buffalo head coach John Roush has called the Oilers the best defensive unit in pro football. A stingy defense and an improving offense have kept Houston on top in the East, ahead of the defending champion New York Jets. Paul Brown's first place baby Bengals had won three straight behind number 12 league leading passer Greg Cook. But number 14, Sam White, replaced the injured Cook last Saturday night in San Diego. The Chargers, led by number 21, John Hadle, the league's number two passer, were ready to repay the Bengals for their embarrassing loss two weeks before. But the Bengals were ready too. On the game's second play, number 30, Jess Phillips, swept the right side for 49 fast yards. Then a fake sweep turned into a flashy end around play. Number 17, Speedy Thomas, sped all the way to the game's first score. Moments later, a missed handoff in the bingo backfield turned into a Chargers scoring opportunity. From the eight yard line, number 26, Brad Hubbard, tied the score for San Diego. The next time the Chargers had the ball, Hadel hit league-leading receiver Gary Garrison for 42 yards to the Bengal town. From there, Dickey Post, number 22, fought his way to the two-yard line. Brad Hubbard rammed over for his second touchdown and the Chargers were seven points ahead at the half. In the second half, Paul Brown sent in a play which is becoming a Bengal trademark. White faked to Paul Robinson, rolled right, and then fired to tight end Bob Trumpy, number 84. The score was tied, and Bob Trumpy had added a bit more luster to his rapidly growing reputation as a game breaker. But from then on, the inexperienced and injured Bengals never had a chance. Dickey Post added 24 more yards to his rushing total of 123. Brad Hubbard added 22 more to his total of 72. Hubbard then added his third touchdown of the night. The Chargers had their second consecutive victory and the bouncing Bengals had finally been beaten. 